So parang yung may mga seminars na napupunta yung iba't ibang university sa school namin to introduce themselves. I was like, oh shit, I don't know what I want. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Dari David, and for this video, I'm going to share how I got here. Here as in, in college, taking computer science and accepting the fact that I'll be spending the rest of my life in front of a computer. But yeah, I'll be talking about how I got into computer science, what are the steps that I did to get me into where I am now, and what made me hesitant about choosing this course. But first, syempre, ang di mawala. Entering college was a really big step for me and I think to anyone else din naman, you know, new environment, new people, new circle of friends, new subjects na iiyakan. And believe it or not, I wasn't the type of girl na may target course and university na. Like, hindi ako yung parang nung bata pa lang sabi ko sa ko na, yes, I wanna be a programmer, yes, I wanna be an expert in the tech industry. Like, hindi ako ganun. Ang tanda ko lang, ang gusto ko lang nung bata ko is maging famous na dancer. Never ko inisip yung mga gatong bagay until grade 12, kung kailan nag-register na for entrance exams. Kasi in-enjoy ko lang talaga yung high school life ko. So parang yung may mga seminars na napupunta yung iba't ibang university sa school namin to introduce themselves, I was like, oh shit! I don't know what I want. So the reason why I wanted to make this kind of video kasi baka makatulong siya sa mga taong paparating na sa college but nasa gantong phase. I'm not saying na, hey, this is what I did so ito rin gawin mo. Like, no, that's not the point at all. It's more like, hey, kwentuhan tayo, get your drinks, chillax, I'll tell you my story and you can tell me yours. Lastly, this video is all about how I made my mind up in choosing computer science among all the other courses, not why. So, Ano siya, paano ako pumili ng course, hindi yung bakit gusto ko yung course. So, iba pa yung why I fell in love with that course. So, coming soon and alright, let's get started! Okay, so I'm lost, I don't know what to do, and malapit na yung deadline. The first thing I did was to list all the things I enjoy doing, yung mga hobbies ko, ganon, and things that have been there my whole life. Tapos, kinategorize ko sila if it was an influence or something I've been doing na talaga since bata. For example, I enjoy talking, performing, and meeting a lot of people. These are things that I've been doing na talaga ever since. But there are also things like seeing my parents work in clinics, or exploring the internet for the very first time, or looking at someone edit a video, which are influences. Meaning, kunyari, nagtig ako ng dentistry kasi na-influence ako ng parents ko. Doing this made me realize na maraming factors in choosing a course. And nakakatakot din kasi we constantly change. Like, what if ganito yung piniling kong course because I like learning about plants nung bata ko. But din nung second year ako, yoko na pala. So may mga situation na ganun and ang dami yung pumapasok sa isip ko habang naglista ako. If you're gonna do this, I suggest go crazy on it lang. Like, lagay mo lahat ng gusto mo dyan. Like, I like solving mysteries or I like writing stories or I enjoy watching sports with my friends. Pagkatapos ko magkula na lista, nag-search ako ng mga jobs connected dun sa action na yun. What you can do is, kunyari, mag-search ka job about building houses or job about cooking. And maraming lalabas sa Google dyan na, kunyari, ito yung mga tinitake na or ito yung mga job ng mga nag enjoy sa ganyan or sa ganon. In my case, nag-search ako ng job about computers and then nilist ko yung mga jobs na interesting sa akin. Like, oh, when you want to explore computers, you can try computer programmer. O kaya, oh, when it comes to meeting a lot of people and talking in front of them, you can try radio DJ or TV host. O kaya, oh, when it comes to editing videos, you can try graphic designer or something like that. And ayun, so meron akong two columns. First column, my hobbies or influences. And second column, jobs na connected dun sa mga yun. After that, nag-research naman ako about the jobs. Like, what degree do people usually take to land this kind of job? So, in my situation, nag-search ako, kunyari, computer programmer, and then lumabas, ay yung usually na tinitake niyan ay BS IT, BS CS, and other computer-related courses. And then, sa pagiging TV host naman, Mascom or Broadcom or ComArts, and then, sa pagiging graphic designer naman, pwede daw multimedia arts. So, I narrowed it down to one specific course per job. Now, here comes the technique that I really like doing in making decisions, which is pros and cons. After adding that course column, nag-research naman ako about the course, and it went like this. So, diba, exploring the internet, hobby slash influence. A computer programmer, job na connected dun sa hobby or influence. And then, BS computer science, yun daw yung usually na tinatake pag gusto mo maging computer programmer. Now, ang ginawa ko naman, sinerge ko kung ano usually nangyayari sa computer science. And then, kunyari, nakalagay, oh, in taking computer science, you learn how to make software applications. Isipin ko kanyan, is that a pro for me or a con? 
Well, it's a pro kasi I want to learn about that. I want to learn how to make software. Tapos makita ko in computer science you encounter a lot of math problems. So iisipin ko ngayon is that a pro or a con? Well, it's a con because I don't want to experience that, but here we are. And so, ayun, just search about the course and write what you like about the course in the pro section and write the things that you expect mo may hirapan ka in the con section. Now na nakorpit ko na yung all about the courses, including their short description and pros and cons, ililist ako naman yung mga universities na gusto kong pasukan. For me, this was the easiest part kasi bawal naman ako ng Manila, so X is lahat. The joke lang. So, ayun, nag-search lang ako ng um, universities around my area na pwede ako. But for you, you can include factors like the location, the cost of the tuition fee, the community, and many many more. Siyempre, huwag mo rin kakalimutan i-make sure na in-offer nila yung course na gusto mo. So, ayun, basically, minatch ko lang yung university sa course column. Okay, so let's recap. First column, I have a list of hobbies or influences that I enjoy doing. Second column naman, nandun yung mga jobs na connected dun sa hobbies or influences. And then, ang makikita naman sa third column, yung mga uh, college degrees na usually tinatake para makuha mo yung job na yun sa second column. And then, fourth column, nandun naman yung mga universities na nag-offer ng mga college degrees na makita mo sa third column. After doing a lot of research and writing stuff down, nakupit ko na rin yung table ko. I have the hobbies, job, courses, and pros and cons, and universities. With all that information I have, I started my process of elimination. Kasi gusto ko pa nag-entrance exam ako, isa lang yung course na isi-shade ko, yung parang gusto ko, ganun. Pero what you can do is, kunyari, sa University A, etong course. Pero sa University B, etong course. So, ganun yung ginawa ng iba. Iba-ibang courses, iba-ibang universities. So, how did I do my process of elimination? This was the hardest part kasi kahit na complete ko na yung table ko, I still feel completely lost. The first thing I did in the process was to eliminate the obvious ones. Like, kunyari, dentistry. I don't see myself studying about it at all and I don't see myself working in a medical field. So, kaya ko lang siya nalagay kasi naisip ko if my parents and ate can do it, I can do it too. But, hindi ko siya talaga gusto. There were a lot of self-reflection. Like, yun nga, I asked myself, do I really see myself giving my 100% to this specific course for 4 years? Okay, yeah. Do I really see myself working in this field sa future? The second thing I did was to search for testimonials or reviews about the course. Like, ano yung mga naging experience ng graduate ng course na to? Kamusta na sila? Where are they now? Etc. And kasama dito yung mga day in the life videos which were a really big help din kasi nagka-idea ako kung anong pwedeng manyari sa akin in the future. The third thing I did was to ask for advice from different people. Receiving advices are really helpful, but this was the last thing I did kasi hindi siya reliable since galing siya sa iba't ibang um, tao na iba-iba yung kinuha and iba-iba yung experience. Like, kunyari, yung mahirap sa person A, madali naman sa person B. And at the end of the day, kahit ano or gaano karami yung advices na nakuha ko, it will still be up to me kung ano dun yung susundan ko. So, ayun, nasa sa akin pa rin yung decision. It all came down to three courses. Multimedia Arts, Masscom or Broadcom, and Computer Science. So, what made me choose ComSci? Let's go back to the hobbies. So, sa Multimedia Arts, it came from editing multimedia like pub mats, videos, or photos. Sa Masscom naman, it came from talking or just being my extroverted self. And then, ang komsay naman nang galing siya sa pag-export ko sa internet or kahit konting kalikot lang sa pag-restart ng wifi, enjoy na enjoy na ako. Inisip ko, if I go to college, ano dito yung kaya ko pang gawin kahit nag-aaral na ako? Can I learn programming aside from studying the course that I will take? No, kasi I won't be able to balance them. Then, bam! A question popped in my head. Is there a way I can do the talking and the editing habang nag-aaral ako ng isang course sa college? The answer? My YouTube channel. So yun, may course na ako. Computer Science. Pero bakit kahit na-eliminate ko na yung choices ko to one, nandun pa rin yung feeling of hesitation. So after another self-reflection, yes, may liga ko mag-self-reflect, na-realize ko it's because of the cons I listed. Marami raw math. Mahirap daw. Onti lang daw gumagraduate. But then, experience yun ang iba. Bakit ako mapapatalo sa takot na kunin yung course na yun kung wala pa nga? Kung wala pa naman ako sa experience nila? I'm not saying it was easy to remove the fear kasi it's really not na hanggang ngayon nga actually takot pa rin ako na hindi ko kaya. It may not be that big of an achievement para sa inyo but one thing I'm really proud of is that kinuha ko siyang takot. I didn't let fear stop me from chasing what might be a big and an amazing chapter of my life. 
and I wasn't wrong. Taking computer science became something I'm really passionate about. Like, nung una, interesado lang ako sa nagagawa na technology in our lives. Which was enough to list that specific hobby in the first column in the table. But what made me stay is that the fact that the interest turned into passion. Another reason why I hesitated kasi computer science is a quota course. Meaning it's a course that is harder to get into and require a higher score in the admission test than other degree programs. So in short, mumaksa ako ng UP, mumaksa ako ng DASAL, mumaksa din ako ng BOSC scholarship. And yeah, kasi di naman talaga ako matalino nung high school. I was really just an average girl. So when I got the results of those three, sinabi ko sa sarili ko na kahit anumang college or university ako mapupunta, I'll do my best to excel just to show them na okay, ito yung sinayang nyo. Detorate lang. But yeah, lo and behold, I got an entrance scholarship in FU Alabang. And I was like, okay, this is it. May college na ako, may course na ako, and I'll still be able to express what I love doing in my YouTube channel. I guess what I can say to you is that there will always be a way in figuring out what you want or what you're passionate about. You can do it my way in case it helps yung mga pag-research, self-reflection, and column and tables. But you can also look for another way. Kasi no matter what happens naman, everything will fall into place and you'll be okay. I have five last things to share before I say goodbye. Number one is practice courage. Sabi nga nila, you only regret the chances you didn't take. So, do it scared, do it nervous, just go for it. Number two is make opportunities. Pag walang magrab or walang mahalap na opportunities, you make one. Noo na nas isip ko, kaya ako nag-start na YouTube channel para lang matuloy yung pagkadaldal ko. And now it became a platform for me to share how amazing computer science is. And then ayon dati nag-aral ako na self-study ako ng photo and video editing. Tapos yun lalo pa siya dito sa YouTube channel ko and sa graphic design business ko. So my point is, and dami mo pang pwedeng gawin, and dami mong pwedeng explore. Bago mo sayang yung mga opportunities na pwede mong maabot or pwede mong magawa. Number three is stay open to change. Tao lang tayo, we're always changing talaga every day. Kahit nga one year palang yung pandemic, and dami narin ng bago sa akin. So yun, hindi ko siya shut down yung thought na baka mapagod ako sa computer science or baka magbago bigla yung gusto ko. Ina acknowledge ko yung fact na, yes, it might happen someday, and that's okay. I shouldn't limit myself to something, especially kung hindi na ako masaya sa something na yun. So number four is failure or failing doesn't mean you should give up. May nabasa ako na super tumatak sa isip ko. It goes like, you have the talent to succeed, you have the skills and everything, but do you have the guts to fail? We have to remind ourselves that it's okay to fail as long as we're willing to learn from it. Kasi failing and learning from it is one of the best ways to improve in something. And then number five is do what makes you happy, guys. We only have one life to do everything we want, so never forget what you like. Because I know that there are situations that ah, I have to take this course because my parents told me, or I have to take this course because no choice, and I understand that. But I suggest if kaya pa ng free time yon, try mo ilig guys sa day-to-day routine mo yung mga gusto mo. Like for example, if you're stuck in med but gusto mo ng arts, try mo mag-practice ng arts in your free time. O kaya find the art in med. Like kung yare, yung pagdrawing mo ng skull that's already art. O kaya yung pagpractice mo ng veins, si mga ganon, find the art in it. For me, kasi importante talaga na may something ka that will keep you going. Kaya hindi siya connected sa course mo, may may incorporate ka lang na maliit na yon sa day-to-day routine mo ay ayun motivate ka na or my inspiration ka na to get through the day. That's all I have for you guys today. Sana nakatulong siya sa inyo especially sa mga taong parating na sa college but naliligaw. Like hi guys, I'm rooting for you. I know you can do it and I believe in you and you should do. And gusto ko rin magpasalamat for making me reach 4,000 subscribers. Like wow, that's really a big number already kasi ang tagal kong hinintay maka punta sa parang gantong milestone. So, syempre, hindi yun mangyayari without you guys. So, as in, thank you, thank you so much for making me reach 4,000. Like, oh, 4,000! What the hell? Like, besides my passion in the course I'm taking right now, you are the reason why I'm doing this. You are the reason, or you are that something that keeps me going. If you want to share your story or experience in feeling lost, or hindi mo lang kung anong course kukunin mo, or kahit hindi course, or by parang niligaw ka lang or even if you're that person na na tapos ka na don sa parang face na yon or na overcome mo na siya if you want to share it go ahead please I really appreciate it if you guys tell me your story kasi I really love reading the comments kaya di ako medyo na ka reply pero ayon 
I-share nyo lang. Tell me your story. Get your kape din. Wait lang, ubusin ko na to. Ayun, magkantuhan lang tayo. And yeah, as always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell if you want to be notified if ever I release another video. And don't forget to like and share this to your friends. Have a great day. Stay safe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!